Next slide. So I will be talking to you about improving the health of upper motor neurons and why it is crucial for developing effective treatment strategies in ALS. As you know, ALS is diagnosed as the, upper, uh, as the uh, progressive degeneration of the upper and lower motor neurons and the motor neuron circuitry degeneration. So movement starts in the brain. So for each cognitive uh, movement that we make, our brain is involved and they send the signal to the spinal cord and then the spinal muscle, spinal motor neurons send the uh, information to the muscle and they do the uh, contraction. But the first order actually goes from the brain. That's why it is very important that we keep the upper motor neurons in our minds when we are trying to develop effective treatment strategies or long-term treatment strategies, because without in, uh, involving the brain, it will be very hard to have long-term and effective solutions. And, but of course, you know, there are some roadblocks to success in developing effective treatment strategies. One of them is, of course, the ALS is a rare disease with many different underlying causes, as you have um, recognized, I think, with the talks today. And we don't really have good biomarkers to distinguish patients and also to reveal the timing and extent of uh, neuron degeneration. <coughs> that could be spinal motor neuron degeneration, upper motor neuron degeneration. But without the proper biomarkers, it's very hard for drug companies to delve into these uh, big and very expensive efforts because they need a way to see if their treatment is working or not. And mostly the upper motor neurons are left out of the equation or out of the picture that we don't really have good preclinical assays or good uh, uh, treatment strategies for upper motor neurons. And maybe we haven't really considered gene therapy very much. So, I'm gonna tell you a very uh, sh short story about patients with different mutations. We say ALS is complex and so far 147 genes have been either associated or linked with ALS, which means you, when you have the mutation, you have ALS or when you have the mutation, the chance of you having ALS increases. And all of these genes code for a protein and the cellular events, that uh, take place are also uh, in part due to protein-protein interactions. Then we said for all these 47 genes that code for a protein, what other proteins do they interact with? And how are their interactions affected? So imagine we took all these genes, 47 genes, and did the protein-protein uh, interaction assays. And we published this uh, article, but we found out that if we put all the proteins that interact, there's an interactome, there's a big map of all the proteins that are involved in ALS pathology. And this begins to tell us how all these protein interactions converge in uh, distinct pathways. And some of them are, for example, important in um, let's say lipid homeostasis, cytoarchitectural dynamics, and you know, different biological uh, events. And these show us that uh, these are the, let's say they also pay attention for DNA damage and repair. It tells us uh, what are the major uh, points that these cells are really um, paying attention to. For example, the cytoarchitectural dynamics if, as Jonathan talked about KIF and um, statmin also binding to microtubules. If I can move, I cannot move, okay. So looking at these uh, proteins and protein interaction domains begin to reveal to us that it's not really the genes per se, but it is the protein uh, dynamics that lead to progressive degeneration. Because when proteins cannot do their function and uh, there is a, um, there's a defect in the cell, they begin to show vulnerability. And understanding the protein dynamics begin to uh, appear one of the important uh, quests. And this was actually um, covered also in Science Trends that we can begin to understand the cellular events which are perturbed by, by looking into the uh, protein, protein and interactions. So this led, uh, uh, 
to our collaboration with our CLP members, Neil Kelleher and Steve Patry. So we got a Corneo Award to look for the uh, protein interactions and how they're uh, manipulated or uh, defect, become defective in the cortex. And this also led to uh, us getting a DOD grant. Now we're looking into biomarkers that would sh show us about the timing and extent of upper motor neuron loss. Again, focusing our attention to the changes in the proteins. And uh, this was also in collaboration with Dr. Pagononi and Dr. Berry at MGH. Uh, and I think it will be really important uh, focusing our attentions to the proteins and protein dynamics and have that change, because I think this would uh, begin to reveal the, the biomarkers that we are um, very, um, very much uh, in need. In addition, we received another DOD grant for developing a cell-based and mechanism-focused uh, preclinical platform using diseased upper motor neurons with Dr. Dun and Dr. Luan. And that uh, lies from our initial discovery that the upper motor neurons were genetically labeled with fluorescence, and we generated the UCHL1 EGFP mouse. This was an upper motor neuron uh, reporter line, and that allowed us to show focus from mice to uh, neurons, disease neurons. And here you can see uh, that the labeling is uh, restricted to layer five. And these are the neurons that die in ALS patients. So it's not all cortical neurons, but primarily upper motor neurons. And uh, as uh, Kat was telling us about different mouse models in ALS, these are very well characterized mouse models. Now you can actually cross them to the UCHL1 mice so that you bring cellular clarity to upper motor neuron investigation. We have done this with the SOD, with the TDP, Alcin, Profilin, Spastin. I think we have four or you know, more than five mouse lines available in our lab now. And these are diseased models in which uh, upper motor neurons uh, show the phenotype or pathology at a cellular level and they are fluorescent. And this allows us to develop a novel uh, drug screening platforms, both in vivo so that you can give the drug uh, to the uh, well-characterized mouse models. And you can look at the uh, cellular integrity and cell numbers in the, uh, in the motor cortex. Or most importantly, you can also develop in vitro uh, uh, preclinical platforms where you can investigate whether compounds of interest would improve the health of diseased upper motor neurons. And uh, we have written numerous reviews about this and that we should incorporate the upper motor neuron health in ALS drug discovery. And this brings me to my collaboration with Dr. Silverman. And Dr. Silverman is actually in the audience. So, and he attended, I think, all, all, almost all Les Turner symposiums. He has given numerous talks. So I'm very happy that he's here with us today. And in collaboration with him, uh, we identified that a compound generated and characterized in his lab, which we called NU9, has the ability to improve the health of diseased upper motor neurons. And that was the first compound to improve the health of upper motor neurons. And um, now he formed the company. Hopefully, we are moving into clinical trials soon. And uh, for the gene therapy, I would like to tell you that uh, there is a way to, uh, uh, to uh, approach ALS uh, from the cortex and that we can actually improve the health of the diseased upper motor neurons by gene therapy. And I'm, I don't have time to go into detail, but we published a paper in Nature Gene Therapy. Uh, Dr. Barish Gench is the first author and he's in the audience with us. It made it the cover to the, art, to the journal. And here we show that uh, upper motor neuron degeneration does not depend on spinal motor neurons and that you can actually uh, treat them at a cellular level. And it seems as if UCHL1 is a good target. So Northwestern University actually made a news about this and I was invited by uh, numerous sites to give talks. And I think in the future, we would be able to uh, approach the brain component of, of ALS by gene therapy. And that would also allow us to give, uh, to uh, uh, you know, uh, provide personalized uh, medicine approaches. So in summary, ALS is a heterogeneous disease and proteins speak. It's not the genes and mutations, but proteins are also very informative. Biomarkers are required to improve the success of clinical trials and NU9 is moving forward. That's good news. And especially for rare forms of ALS and especially for patients with pr very predominant upper motor neuron loss, including HSVPLS patients, gene therapy may be an option. 
So thank you so much and 